So I hope you could figure out some separation process and what these depend on, what kind of physical and or chemical characteristics that make these work. Well, distillation is one of the separation processes and that depends on differences in vapor pressure. You could say that it works due to differences in boiling points, but if you think of the vapor pressure curve, the boiling point is just one point on that curve and it these curves might actually intersect so one substance might be more volatile at lower temperatures and then another substance might be vo volatile at higher temperatures so a difference in vapor pressure is a more accurate way to put it the standard distillation column out in the industry is typically a continuous column so you have a feed somewhere in the middle and then you have a reboiler at the bottom that takes the liquid that comes down and evaporates part of it so that you form a gas that goes up through the column and then towards the top you have a condenser which cools down the vapor and turns it to a liquid especially if it's a taut condenser it turns everything into a liquid and then gives some of the liquid back to the column now since you have a reboiler down there and a condenser up there it's hot down there and it's cool down there and that's why separation works here now in the first part of the course you did degree of freedom analysis and let's try to do that for the distillation column and we simply ignore now that you need energy balances as well just just think about uh, the mass balance so we have this system and let's assume that we know the composition of the feed and we know what composition we want in the distillate and the bottom product. So we know three things. And let's assume that we only work with binary uh, systems. So we only have two components. So try to do a uh, degree of freedom analysis for this. So pause here and try to do this yourself. Okay, I hope you tried this yourself. Let's think it th this through. You have three different flows. You have the feed, you have the distillate, and you have the bottom product. In all three flows, you have two components. So this means that you have, in total, six stream variables. Okay, how many component balances can you make? Well, you have two components, and you have just one system. So you can only make two component balances. How many knowns do we have? Well, we know three compositions. And as you see, if we just take one basis of calculation, we have zero degrees of freedom left and we can calculate everything. OK, so that seems fine. But let's look a bit more in detail and see how the system really works. Because there are inner flows in the system. So up there where you have the condenser, from the condenser, there is a flow that comes down to a splitter and then some liquid is going back and some is going out. And down at the reboiler, well, the reboiler is a separate unit. So now you have more flows and your degree of freedom analysis changes. So try to solve this. Try to make a degree of freedom analysis for this system now. OK, I hope you try that. Now, we said that we had a two component system, so a binary system, and we still only know three compositions. We know the feed composition, we know the composition in the distillate, and we know the composition in the bottom product. But we have a lot more flows now. We have eight different flows, which means that we in total have 16 different stream variables. Component balances. Well, you have the column, you have the condenser, you have the splitter, and you have the reboiler. So you have four subsystems which means that you can make in total eight component balances. You have a splitter, and if you think through how splitters work, you can realize that it's only one splitter condition. So that's one known as well. And then you have the three compositions, and then you add the basis of calculation, and you're left with three different degrees of freedom. So how does this work? Where does this freedom come from? Well, you can make this system work in many different ways. 
it's not enough just to say, that, okay, this is the feed composition, that's the distillate composition, and that's the bottom product composition. Other things can change. If you, for example, change the splitter to let more liquid come back, then you will change the flow rates in, in the column, which means that you need to put more energy in the reboiler. So there, actually, the energy use will change depending on how you set the splitter. And another thing they haven't talked about at all is that, well, inside a column, uh, you will need to have some things that make the contact good between the liquid and the gas. And typically you have some physical stages that are called, like a bubble cap tray, for example, or a sieve tray, uh, that the liquid falls onto and the gas percolates through to make the contact as good as possible. And we haven't said anything about how efficient these are. Furthermore, we haven't said anything about how the system actually works. I mean, is it ethanol water? Is it benzene toluene? What, what is it? What kind of system is it? And what, how is that equilibrium in there? I mean, what kind of equilibrium can you get between ethanol and water? What is the composition of a boiling liquid that is in, com in uh, equilibrium with a condensing gas? So there are many things uh, that you can change here. And if you go out in the industry and have a distillation column, you can change a lot of operating conditions, such as the reflux ratio, which is essentially changing the splitter up there to tell how much of the liquid should go back to the column. Uh, you can change the boil up ratio, which is essentially how much energy you put in in the reboiler. So the boil up ratio is the ratio between the vapor that comes out from the boiler and uh, related to the liquid down there. And you can also change the conditions of the feed. So we haven't said anything about is the feed a liquid? Is it a gas? At what temperature is the liquid? So even though if you fix the composition, that doesn't tell us everything because we have energy to take into account as well.